John Nelson would be very good. Oh. Um, yeah. I pledge the pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Cemetery commissions. Uh, 
and we got some of our information from Frank and John and Craig helped us out on this. And I'd like the selectmen to sign off on it. If you have any questions or you want to add something to it or delete something. Thank you. Very much. Let's start with the selectmen first. Do you have any questions? Okay. Um, do we have a map of where we think people are buried? Would you say there's some spots available? Is that documented somewhere? Where we could... no. no. I have. I had um, a volunteer from town, and she and her daughter went through the whole cemetery and jotted down on a beautiful map what they could find, any stones or indentations and names. They measured it out for us and everything, but I don't think we really indicated really well. That's so, a good idea. So the two or three that are available, how, how or where are they documented? So if, mm -hmm. if someone has to use them. They're next to that new one. It's Tom Tucker. Okay. And then the new one. And then two Frank more. seems to think there's right two or three there. next mm -hmm. to that. Away so from start the wall. Away from the side wall, working down the front. Yeah. And when we were there when they were digging for this new cement, the new uh, burial and the rocks coming out of there. Good luck if you can get two or more in there. I think that, you know, the big hump, the hill in the middle must be our ledge. That's what it seemed to be. That's what I think we'll do that. Any questions? I have one other question before we go with everybody else. I've had a number of people ask about uh, burials on their own property. Do you, you know that's not an essence or thing, but you know the ground ones? Well, in the workshop, we can, I don't believe there are. Yeah, I think anything, anything goes. You can bury it in your own way. It kind of stuck out in my mind that you don't even have to have a casket. You can just bury a body in the ground. Oh. And all we have to do, and all we have to do is collect a burial permit. And then I collect the burial permit, and I don't know what to do with it. Nobody wants it, so we just file it with Craig or in our stuff. Do you, um, Virginia keeps track of that? I've tried to give it to her. She doesn't want it. <laughs> Sorry. So much. Okay. Not my job. <laughs> she said hers, her paperwork comes from a concert, and she doesn't. Well, maybe that's something we need to address too. That people just can't be somebody putting the body in or something. I mean, just go yeah, first these and meetings that we've gone to and conquered and the state meetings is the thing they told us was to collect a burial permit from the funeral director. I think it's well described in the RSA. Right. Mm -hmm. Did we have a right to change any of that? We have our own regulations on that. That's, I guess, what I'm getting at. What they accept, and we put our own thing to say, yes, you can, but this is the requirement, you know, 40 feet from the line, um, at least six feet down or whatever. Um, some type of regulation. But, uh, oh, just move for that. We had some questions. Yeah, how much uh, acreage do you need for a new cemetery? What did we say, an acre? Wasn't it an acre going to be? Two acres will take care of the town for many, many decades, because you can get 400 burials per acre. A building lot, in other words. Okay, yeah. thank you. And you don't even have to develop all two acres, right? You can start with right. one acre. And... <clears throat> do you have any, do they require fences in cemeteries? I see a lot of them around without any fence. I'm not, I'm talking about the town cemeteries. Hmm. I think the town cemetery. I know it has to have a gate, so it must have to have a fence. Because I've seen some driving around and I'm surprised, but maybe they're quite a, large ones. Yeah, very large ones. That purple one across the most mountain, that doesn't have anything that I would take it. I think the one in Rochester, I think the one in Conway. I, I think the RSA changed this year on that. Saying you don't need them anymore. It came out in one of our monthly magazines. Okay. Changed this year. <laughs> they did require it, but it was nobody ever enforced. And there are re regulations that can't, you can't have a burial ground so many feet from the highway and so many feet from the There are definitions in the RSA. Okay. Any other questions?
Ed. Marilyn, no, um, no burial vaults are, are needed anywhere in the state or just that particular spot? I just assumed it's anywhere. I know you couldn't do that in Massachusetts. <laughs> That, that's what makes me believe the town can make their own rules because I know of some towns that do require vaults. Effing freedom. Freedom. Freedom requires a vault. Wakefield does too. Does it? Level eight cemetery does. Mm -hmm. well, it makes sense too. I mean, we should limit it. You can't be put in a wetlands area. I mean, there should be some logical things. I mean, that's something you guys could check into with other towns and see what uh, until it's a very forward. Any other questions from everybody? Anybody? Okay, we thank you very much. Thank you very much, very good. I'd like to... Uh, ex signing this, is signing this, accepting it, or is it signing it, accepting what's in it? What's in it? So we don't... And I'll jot down some of your other concerns. Or and if you send me the PDF, we can put it on the summary part of, part of the website? Oh. Under regs for cemetery? Sure. Okay. Okay, uh, let's jump now, if we could, to Karen. We're going to go out of sequence, Karen. Excuse me? We're going to go out of sequence. We're putting you to the top. Oh, you mean a plan? Yep. Okay. The way out of sequence, I was at the end. Okay, you'll have to excuse me. Uh, my paper didn't come here. Uh, my blueprint paper, um, it developed itself which means over time it turns blue and you can't use it. I have a new pack ordered for a week ago and it hasn't come yet. It should be here any day. However, <coughs> almost all of the drawings are done. This is the fourth one. I'm going to spin it around. And I'm going to print you out 10 copies. This is the structural work business. As soon as I get my paper, I have the whole crew machine with something.
Right. As soon as the paper gets here, it should come today, but it didn't come today. Okay. Any questions? Yes. Yeah. Well, you were under there. Yeah. <laughs> what did you think? I'm not going there. I had my anti blonde recluse fighter. I'm not going there. Um, did you see anything that could impact this work? Yep. Well, yeah, a lot of stuff. Um, for instance, um, all the electrical that's been added to the building over the years has all been wired underneath and stapled up all over the place. And it comes up to the outlets. The theory behind the renovation is that you're going to do that electrical up above later. You feed the outlets from above the wainscot to the, the outlets that exist and the new outlets if there are any. So that wiring has to come out because it's stapled to all the places where the floor joists have to go. It's not a big deal, but it's got to be removed. Um, there's another thing there, and that is the oil lines from the oil tank, which is right parked by the back door, stapled up underneath the existing 8 inch deep floor joist. There'd be no way to insert the new floor joist without destroying those oil lines. So they have to be disconnected. Either disconnected and removed and replaced later, or just ripped out. Um, there's two of them. I want, one I imagine is a feeder, and I can Oh, one's probably for each of the two furnaces. That's, that's what it amounts to. Um, and the, how the heating system for the townhouse has a larger heating system than the, the uh, schoolhouse. And that has a very large plenum, which is what is known as an air chamber off the impeller that distributes the hot air to the trunk line. Now that, that thing is, is enormous, <coughs> way bigger than it needed to be for the size of the place you're eating. And is it under the schoolhouse yep. portion, Barry? It yes, is. it is. Oh, I didn't think it was. Yeah, okay. it is because, yeah, because the, the, heat, the heat for the townhouse is actually in the schoolhouse. Right, but I didn't know that it was in... Well, there's a, there's a plenum that sticks down underneath the furnace, okay. and that's where the hot air comes. Then it goes into the trunk line, which runs to the front of the building. Yep, sorry. That's okay. Um, now, the plenum is this enormous thing that... <laughs> well, when they went in there and put the heating system in some time ago, instead of framing it up anew around the old floor joists, they just cut off the floor joists. <laughs> where the plenum was going to go and stuck cement blocks and chunks of wood under them. So they're basically not supported by much, but just junk. They're there and at the right height, but they're not connected together or framed in at all. It's just a bunch of cut-off floor joists hanging out in the middle of nowhere with things on them. And the, the new, and that's this one here, and this one here, and maybe this one, I can't remember. Because the plenum is right about here. Anyway, for these joists to be installed here, not on this side, but on this side, the plenum really needs to go. Now, we've talked about heating systems over there a number of times. Um, I can do this arithmetic for you, if you, and I have no problem doing it. Not here, though, because it, it's too time consuming. Which would outline all the different variations of heating systems that can be put in here. Forget manufacturer, I'm just talking about types. And they run from one type of hot air furnace to another type of hot air furnace. I presume you're not going to go with hot water. Uh, I wouldn't suggest that they have to have hot water registers all over the place or something. Now, the way that works is um, you can get grant money for some of this stuff, but the stuff you get grant money for the cost of the town 50 grand to install. So if you get 20 grand in grant money, you're still going to cough up 30 to put the heating system in. So it's no bonus. Not considering the use we do that building. And so I guess what I'm saying is now you could buy just as high a quality. Now those things are 98 percent efficient, by the way. Which means if you run them all the time, you run them at high capacity, they heat a large area, they pay back in five or ten years by the oil consumption level. Whereas if you don't use the building that much, you can buy the same quality unit with less of an efficiency. What you've got over there now is probably 70% efficient if you're lucky, because it's, it's an empty. And it's definitely 
way lower than today's common ASU respects. I would say to you that you could buy a very high quality, but not very complicated forced hot air system and install it for under for ten thousand dollars. I'm just going to call it ten grand. That gives you one heat um, register right at the back end of the town hall and another one at the front with one trunk line. The reason I suggest that is because all the other lines to all the peripheral places in the town hall are plugged with insulation. They're not even being used at this point and they haven't been for years. So that whole series of ducts to the side of the building are irrelevant now. And the town hall is quite comfortable when we need to make it that way. So what would be the point in spending several thousand dollars more and a lot of extra stuff for it? And then get as much. You know, one of these $10,000 systems would bring the town hall up to 70 degrees in 20 minutes. And then you can turn it off if you wanted to, or you can put it in anything you want. But they're only going to be 75 to 82 percent efficient, maybe 80. 80 probably. You can find a good one for 80 percent. The point is, if we use it five or ten days a year, 80 percent efficient is going to cost us extra money. And I can pin that down to how many dollars and cents of the today's oil dollars or propane dollars by the, by the heat loss. Because I'm going to do a heat loss gain. I think you're doing it too. But I'm going to do a heat loss gain on the building and also calculate how many BTUs during an average degree day, which is 34 degrees roughly around here during the heating season, and how much it will cost to run that thing for per day. Um, well, where one of these um, very sophisticated systems will cost far less to run if you ran it all the time, and when I say far less, the payback on that could conceivably be 60 years out or 50 years out if you buy a $50,000 system. And some of those, they're very, very complicated, but very serviceable. Elaborate systems with modulating uh, stainless steel condensing units that will temper down the, the uh, uh, heat or water flow based on the demands being placed on it by various portions of the building. But they're very sophisticated and they're very expensive. I don't recommend it for that use over there. Um, so I'm saying that this is an antique, and it needs to be replaced at some point. It might include the town to consider getting some prices on getting that done as part of this particular in, uh, thing, getting the floor fixed, because then you eliminate somebody coming in doing most of the floor, coming back later and doing more of the floor, setting up, crawling back under the the throw last five joists in the left-hand side. I, I, you know, it's just a suggestion that if it can be factored into the budget, considering the fact that you're only going to go this far now and later on, then you could, then what that would entail would be giving the townhouse back heat again, which if we took the oil lines out, we would then replace them under the new floor joists if you're going to run the same antiquated systems again. You're not going to be able to run the heat. The heat that goes into the schoolhouse is, is dead once you start this renovation. It's gone. The ducts are gone, and it would be silly to reduct the place, considering the shape of the heat in this family. Whatever you use for heat back there, my suggestion was that an eye in the back was would more than adequately do this, but that's not my decision. If we cut off the back, because of the construction, uh, what happens with the bathrooms? We'd have to turn those down. Well, you drain them. You'd have to drain them. Yeah, you'd have to shut the water off during the construction. Actually, what you could do is you could wire the pump from the panel so that you had water if you needed water. But if you rip out the plenum for the heating system, you kill the heat to the town hall, to the, to the town hall, until you replace it. Or don't do it now and do it later. I mean, these are all issues that have to be decided on the approach. So my suggestion would be that the town, if it's going to put the new heating system to pony up to 10 for the front now, it's dealt with. 
Um, I don't see any real structural stuff that's going to go on in that front building. There's been a few things that I think were done wrong, but not disastrously wrong. They could have been done better, and we probably wouldn't have the cracks we have there now in some of those places, but they can be repaired, and they're not, probably not going to move anymore. Question for you in regards to getting underneath the last year's big dimension. You're limited how far you can go. Do you think we definitely need to move the dirt? Oh, we've got to take some dirt out of there. I'll tell you, it's at a point where there's only this much room for people to, you know, to work under and put new floor joists in. You know, some, some work has to be done. It's what's there. Um, and then the insulators all have to get in to spray the foam. And they cannot do that in 8 to 10 inches of, of space. I mean, this stuff that they're going to spray is, you know, it's heavy-duty stuff. So you're having it sprayed underneath the whole well, that was what is in the proposal, is to do the foam here. What the foam does is it, it adheres to the, other, to the joists and the other side of the subfloor and forever eliminates condensation, which is the source of dry rot in those kind of places for moisture. It, it, it seals it, encapsulates it in a plastic, so there's no more condensation able to, to perch underneath that subfloor. It's not going to rot anymore. Uh, that's how they're doing most of the cathedral ceilings now. They're foaming them. They don't want any bridge vents or soffit vents because it does solve that problem. And that's what I figured into that. If you look at my, I don't have the cost sheet with me, but it's here. Foaming this to, a, I think it was an R30 underneath. That was figured in. And without even a thought, because these are all pressure treated floor joists. What happens when you spray the foam? You're going to spray all the sills. Now they're encapsulated. You're going to spray all this up subfloor in the center beam because you just can foam it. No problem. Now you've virtually eliminated the possibility of dry rot attacking any of those members again. Forever, really. Well, forever's a long time, but as long as our children will be alive, and they're children. But at any rate, the pressure treated beams that are still going to be exposed are not affected by the any moisture that might gather in there from summertime. And I still need to let it sit while I can take them out. If we dig out 18 plus inches of dirt on it, will that make the integrity of the walls? Will that be any problem with that? Well, it won't change it. No. You've got that much dug out on the outside. Okay, all right. But there's no retention factor there. Okay, that's not In fact, it was suggested by San and Falls Architecture and that the interior be washed and parched, and I suggest that here too with the repairs. My suggestion for the repair of this is not to do it with mortar. Mm -hmm. Mortar is a bad way to go because you can't really bond this block back together without removing and replacing it with trowel and mortar. You can't do it. I don't care who thinks they can do it, you can't do it. There's only one way you can do it, and that's with structural epoxy. It's a little pricey, but it's infallible. Uh, it, it's got a PSI. Of some of it's 2,000, some of it's 5,000. Um, it grabs and never lets go ever again. It's structural material. And that's what you should bond with any of these blocks, spaces after removing the loose mortar with. Not, not just a bunch of mortar and trial. Absolutely won't do the job. I, I think it's good. I think, I think we should get on with it. And, you know, if that means we have to shut the building down for a while so that we can replace that part of the heating system if that's compatible with where we're going in the future. And it's $10,000, I agree with that analysis, but we don't want to put the super efficient when they take too long to get it back. I, I, we got electric wires, we got oil pipes, we got plumbing. Maybe just shut it down. The whole building, both front and back, get it done. What I mean by getting it done is get the floor joists in, get a new heating system in. And then we can power it back up and work on the other issues. So would you do the foundation? So would it be the three, the foundation, the floor, the floor and, and the heating heat. system? So if we were to do, if we were to do those three things, do the items in the schoolhouse, currently in the schoolhouse, need to come out of the schoolhouse, possibly go to the townhouse. What are you talking about, the furniture? The furniture. No. That's a, there's no weight there. 
that has absolutely nothing to do with anything. You leave that furniture there during the entire construction process. Mainly because this, the way this is going to be done, you're not going to gut out the existing floor joists. They're going to stay. There's only two down there that have any significant rotted, and then there's not really significant. That can be chiseled away. I get a notation here somewhere for that. And, and you're not going to have to move those blocks for the foundation enough to where it'll. Okay. Let me put. You know it, what I mean? Yeah, I understand. Here's a drawing. Of, here's pretty much what it looks like. Yeah. There's 20 feet of above. Uh, right, right in this area here. Here's where you crawl underneath. Yep. Yep. Right in this area from about uh, here to here, there's 20 feet of block. Yep. The top two courses. When they set the building years ago, they tipped out a little. Right. The building and everything is holding the whole thing together. And then they came by and stuck over the outside with a fiber truck out. Quite a while ago. Right. Now, had this been unstable, that stuff would have cracked and, and fallen off or just cracked as the block moved. It hasn't. Okay. What I'm saying is the interior of the block face should be rebonded with the epoxy. The, the interior. The interior. The outside has all been is bonded and okay. stuck up. You can't really get at that. The interior, see, it's tipped out. See this way yep. this is leaning here? Yep. That's what you've got right there. Okay. If this is all, all those joints in that 20 feet are bonded with epoxy, that's probably going to be stronger than everything else that's down there because the epoxy is far stronger than a mortar bond. Okay. okay. I thought it was tipping out. Sorry. Well, the top two courses are slightly tipping out. When they set the building, you kick them out a little bit, and then they just let it go with that. I'm, I'm sure this is what, oh, look what we've been over here. Right. Uh, you can't see it from my house, you know, that type of thing. And, and it's still here, 60 years, so. Right. Okay. Thank you. Well, we need to go further and do the uh, discussion on the heat and try to get that out of the way. <coughs> so you'll have these so we can get the. As soon as I get paper, I'll pick up 10 copies and put them up to bed. I really apologize for that. And spillers just happen to be out of fast paper, which is what my machine prints on. And they, they're going to, they're sending a salesman out if they can't get a UPS to me to drop it off from me. To the backhoe bucket, a whole lot better than five gallon buckets and a bunch of indentured servants. All right, so yeah, we'll take hands. Thank you very much, Gary. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, so we've got that taken care of, so let's go back to the. Any questions or get to the, what we do about the heat later on? Can I ask Betty yeah. about the wall? Sure. I poorly explained it the other day. Did you give me just your thumbnail sketch of what you said you would do with the wall? What do you not want it, to it's my opinion that the mortar is just fine because the mortar is going to be as strong as the block itself. Um, it, it doesn't make sense to me to take an epoxy uh, that is six times stronger than the block to hold the block together. It's the way it's been done for years and years and years. And it's not what I want to do. That, that's what was my suggestion. Pointing. That's what's called pointing. And, um, you know, if if somebody was concerned about it, could use hydraulic cement, which is of a, a real fine grit. Um, and then when that was done, 
treat the inside just like you're treating the outside with some block bond, fibrous block bond. Thank you. I knew I did a bad job last night. Okay. I'm Harry Hitch, filled me in on some of this a uh, couple days ago from so <coughs> about the electrical issue and the uh, heat exchange or whatever you call it, plenum or whatever you call it underneath. Okay. All right, let's go on. Uh, correspondence. We did your car. Can we do this now? We did that for a while. Got a lot of insurance stuff going yeah. Hey. Okay, we have one from the county commissioners. I'm going to use my psychic power to tell you that the county, our portion of the county has gone down for the coming year. For a yeah, it's it's I'm not sure whether it's. Yeah, they want us to do these. I'm not sure how it works out. But anyway, whether it's this coming year, the figure that will be used is 102,000, and I believe last year it was 110,000. I have that number here. So it's not a little bit. Uh, last year we were 107, 102 for 2013. So I'm not sure in our tax bill which one is based on whether it's a week or a year behind. But it's going in the right direction, it's going lower. So over the last couple of years it's been 100,000, 110, 108, 102, 107, down, back down to 102. And, uh, it's all done by evaluations of the town and some magic uh, computer somewhere for this go out. Magic. Um, PLT property trust, property liability trust, excuse me, has sent us a check for a thousand dollars. I reckon support the LGC issued a payment for this loss on or above July 15, 2013, in the amount of eighteen thousand seven thirty-eight eighty and eighty-two cents. The payment was less than one thousand dollars deductible. We have been able to successful in our subrogation efforts to recover the cost of damage from the insurance carrier with the liable party. Therefore, please find a close check for thousand dollars. So that was our thousand dollar deductible that we did not get that they held back from us when we had the schoolhouse damage. Okay, they did. You should pay that deductible. Okay, you're on. And we have a detailed brief for Mitchell Municipal Group outlining what their position is on the uh, suit against the, the town by New England Telephone. And they go through each issue and either admits to the petition or denies it, and it's just what they file with the court. Okay. It's ongoing. Yes. Okay. And this is the thing from Tri-County Community Action in regards to the fuel assistance. Fuel assistance is an income-based program which runs from December 1st to April 30th. We'll keep that posted. And there's some uh, telephone numbers here for people if they wish to uh, give them a call and go with the, uh, wish to use their services. We'll hang up. Don't land that. Okay, who's on next? We have a release of all claims from Hanover Insurance Company, which is the insurance carrier for Dead River Company, the oil company that um, did not, uh, bring us our oil and, and cause our water freeze up. Um, basically what they're saying is for the sum of $21,744.95, we'll release some from all future claims. Um, yeah, it's not an admission of liability on their part, so on and so forth. Um, we've been paid, so I can't see why we wouldn't sign the release. Um, what happens with the, if the floor warps and years. What happens if we sign it? We have no cause of action in the back end. Okay. I thought we were paid before. You know, I, I thought we had a, what, didn't we have a thing for if it, something should happen in the next two years that we come back and cover? If it was not, we, if something is discovered that they didn't anticipate and didn't pay us for, we could go back. I believe they paid for the floor. In the the day before, so, okay. so if we open, if uh, during the renovation we find some other water damage that they did not find, then we can go back for that, but I think they covered before. There's something that if it should start cupping and something That's, that they would take care of that. They gave us the money for that. Okay. So, with that being said, would we want to release them from all claims? Because we, we plan on 
doing any further renovations over there. The water damage was not that extensive per se. It wasn't like we had calls coming down and electrical firing up. What if we don't sign a price? We've already got money. There's not much they can do. So I guess right. that check. That's my point. <laughs> By cashing the, uh, I don't know what the check said. The check said release of all claims and. But the almost. check wasn't from them. All right. So was it this? Isn't this the insurance carrier for? Dead Canada. River. Yeah. So the check wasn't from them, it was from our insurance company. All right, so it was a first party claim. We went against our own carrier, right? So why are we going to sign a release from them? So. That's why it's one of why we got a thousand dollar check from our own carrier. That doesn't make sense. Who's they got the thousand from them? So we just passed it through them to us? Well, let me call, um, let me call her on that. And let me call our whole our agent. Yeah. Who are you doing? Yeah. All right. I have her now. Okay. okay. These are just prime next date, same date, for the conference that they're having, and uh, been pushing that. It's only in May 2014, so that's time to date. Okay. Any other? Yeah. And I've got one from uh, the Board of Tax and Land Appeals ordering us to mediate or try to mediate a uh, disputed tax bill or assessment with the Holland Trust. And we have some dates that we have to comply by, early February, and the letter says, the board in an effort to manage its docket more effectively and expeditiously and to encourage informal disposition of this appeal is ordering the parties in accordance with such and such to meet and attempt to settle this matter before hearing is scheduled. In accordance with tax so and so, at, at or before the, set, the settlement meeting, the taxpayer shall provide the municipality any appraisal which the taxpayer tends to reply on in the hearing. The party shall meet and file the enclosed report of settlement meeting and order with the board no later than February 18, 2014. A hearing in this appeal will not be scheduled until the report has been filed. Okay, that's normal practice. Well, we do, I thought we did it once. But Avatar does it. They get a copy of this also, and they're the ones who s actually meet with, meet with the property owner. We did they, that once. They did it for last year. This is for this year's. Uh, oh, yeah. okay. Because you know. I knew we did it once. Yeah. And we're yeah. doing it again now. And do it again. We did another one. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So I'll follow up with Avatar and make sure that they have it. For Rich, just, just to make sure I'm clear, Hanover didn't pay our claim. No. Well, we, we, we can't release our insurance company's segregation rights. They have rights of, of segregation. Our claim remains active should we finally have any future damage. So even when we, we sign this away, we can't sign away our own insurance company's segregation rights against Dead River. So this, this, this release is meaningless. But why did they send it to us? Right. It's, it's, it's right from the insurance company. Formal Okay. Did you want anything more from yesterday? I ran out. I knew that was one of my clients giving me a call. Okay, cool. Well, okay. Thank you. Nelson refused himself from the conversation, which I did. But I just wanted to reflect that I heard somehow that it was in regards to the decision of awarding the contract. And I'm ready to feel that I 
accused himself from all aspects of this. And the selectman also accused himself from the conversation as he felt there was a conflict of interest between Mary Chicarone and himself. I okay. have no email. Okay, and I think it's like after, so. Okay, and it's yeah. regards to the issuing of the contract. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, make a motion to accept the minutes of draft with the provision you just spoke about. I'll second it. All those in favor? All right. All right. Okay. Public comments. We have a lot of public. Uh, we'll see the comments. Okay. Treasurer's report. So we have in the bank accounts and the checking account $29,527.25. In the savings account, $215. Thousand eight hundred ninety-one dollars and fifteen cents, and then on the insurance claim we have eighteen thousand seven thirty-seven point four six for a total of two hundred sixty-four thousand one hundred fifty-five dollars and eighty-six cents. Remember, in probably the first to mid. November, I get a bill from the county for over a hundred thousand dollars that we owe them for this year. So the next, the next couple again, I go to the next couple school payments. I believe I make December, like in January, because till we get the money from the December property taxes. So that's what the hundred and two is. Must be the bill you're going to get from that. Probably. Yeah. Um, we do have bills. You should also be aware that I filed the payroll reports for the third quarter. They were all filed both with the federal and the state. Um, here are my bills. I have a letter tonight that Laura Spector wrote on for Eddie to sign on the workers' comp issue. And then, where is his contract at? It's done, it's drafted. Yeah. It, um, I know I gave you a copy, I'm yeah. gonna ask. Okay. Yeah, I've seen it, but it's not signed yet. No, but we have to sign no. it. No, right, right. I think you wanted I don't think to you were check it to make right. sure that it was okay before you actually signed it, so. Okay, okay. But, but that contract starts next May. Right. right, but it's supposed to be negotiated and signed in the fall. I understand, but if we're talking insurance premiums for this year, which contract do you want? Well, I'm only we're only dealing with the workers' compensation policy because they <coughs> currently charge us for a portion of the labor that um, currently tan construction bills to the town. So. I have a new bill from Primex, and we're just trying to negotiate that somewhere down the line this will stop because they're not an employee and we should not be paying for it. I would say differently. The contract that we give you, a copy of it, yep. is effective next May. Right. Okay. Now, this, do you know if this bill will... But I'm also going to work on this letter is signed by Eddie. Did she date it? She must have dated it. She did not date it. So we'll have to date this letter. And um, send it back to her. Because the other thing I'm going to go for is that a portion of our past workers' compensation that we've been paying um, be returned to us. Good. Question for you on this. Has this been given to the planning board so they can bill the person in regards to the, the fees? Usually. Yeah. There are, there's a bill here for 122 uh, mail to the CALP. If others notice this, doesn't somebody pay for that? Uh, yeah, I, there's a thing here uh, with a bill for the planning board, and it regards to, um, it says, 
please reimburse George Nick mail for George McCallop butter's notices and subdivision butter's notice. The people have been billed for that. Whoever has to pay for that? Uh, uh, they're fees. supposed to submit that. They're, they're supposed to pay for that in fees. Oh, but do they have the bill to know what they have to pay? I guess that's what I'm it's, a, it's a schedule. It's a preset schedule. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a part of our fee schedule. But they don't incorporate in that. The people that submit this. Um, I'm, yeah. Okay. I just don't. If you have more butter, you have to pay more. So I just didn't know if they got the bill to do what they had to pay. So. On the building, I got a bill from Bob Sonricker for the electrical work and the maintenance shed. Mm -hmm. This says he removed four old T12 fixtures and replaced with new T8 fixtures. Mm -hmm. Wasn't he supposed to add some fixtures? He was going to do all six, but he, there were the two center ones at each row were running just fine and bright, and with the bulbs left from the ones he took out, he figured it would just financially better for the town if he left those two in the center. Okay. <laughs> and does that answer your question? I mean, he put a fixture on the outside uh, in the entrance, and I assume he that was the already built it. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. These are the new ones on the inside, the ones that were burning out that we couldn't fix, yeah. so lights good now. Right. Right. Work faster. <clears throat> Might set me on days, and I forget what I'm doing. And <laughs> Keep you awake. <laughs> What's in the work out have done on the Fairpoint thing? They reviewed, did they review or did they draft interrogatories? Yes, we can please. Avatar. Avatar. They build us for three hours for Fairpoint interrogatories, we have the six list of letters, so that's obviously what that is. But I wonder if that's what are they doing per the town. They're getting the same bill, or is that just for us? Because I'm sure they do work for each of the towns. Yes. I don't know. I'm not aware of it. I just got it in my box tonight. Did you? Yeah. Can we ask them? Well, yeah, I need a copy of it. I'll take a copy of that and then just ask them. I don't know if the lawyer went directly to them. I mean, did they just answer for us? If they did the same thing for all the towns, yeah. then yeah, then they yeah. should be square. The only other thing I have is a new, the new quote for Primex, the workers' compensation carrier. According to their records, we are with them through 2015. We signed a multi-year agreement. They want to know if for that last year, 2015, we want to sign a um, cap where the maximum increase would be 8% from 2014 to 2015. Now, I think my feeling is why would we sign it now when we're trying to negotiate to get lower stuff and we already have the 2014 bill and they're saying they would only increase it 8%. I agree. And that's all I have for Trevor. Unless that's more than eight percent of your somehow the new bill, which is eight percent of whatever the prorated rate is, or something. Okay. Alright, we move on. Ryan has an issue, we can proceed while we're looking at that. Tax collector, administrative assistant. Yeah, I have two things. Um, one is a conference, my annual conference that's coming up in November. It's not a Wednesday and Thursday. Generally, I've gone both days. <laughs> just asking for permission <laughs> to go, that's all. Hopefully you was just the same place we ran into critters for last time. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. Yes. That was the other thing that I'm asking for too, because I have three people that 
for a walk on share room. Mm -hmm. So I ended up paying $48 to stay for the night versus going back and forth to Manchester, which was a lot more money. So that was the other thing. Um, but that I just wanted to make sure that's okay so I can give it to Mary Lou to issue a check for the for the conference. Do you want to initial like to stick this stay? Because I will need a check, but not until November. Until I actually go. We might as well then. Can you do that? I really don't want you to guess. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you did an initial. Boys weekend. <laughs> no, it's during the day. Oh, sorry. I thought I understood. That was for the. <laughs> for the I'm just back to this cap thing. It, it basically says for that premium, for, for that policy year, which is 2015, which is 2015, so it'll months. it'll cap us at eight percent. It could be lower than it was the max cap to be eight percent. So why wouldn't we want to guarantee our, our cap of eight percent? It doesn't obligate us today, way, does it? I'm going to get back to you on that okay. because you know what? I had in my notes in dealing with all this other garbage yeah. that we were done with them December 31st, 2014. Okay, so this might be like an extension kind of thing. Yeah. You don't have extension. All right, so yeah, if our policy term ends on the January 15th, then there's no reason to sign this. But if it doesn't, then I, I think we should sign this. It caps us at 8%. Worst case, right? That was my thought. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, I have one more thing. Um, we're able to, here, I'm going to pass that down. Um, we're able to get some kind of a, a voicemail for the town <coughs> through um, Fairpoint. And um, I don't want a voicemail where people would leave messages because it would be, um, you know, it would be too difficult with all the different hours and everything. So we were thinking about just getting a voicemail where it just tells the people the hours and lets them know that instead of it ringing and ringing and ringing and ringing forever, at least it'll it can pick up after so many rings. A million dollar question: Does it cost us anything? No, it's for. Oh. It, it's with our phone. It's and just with our phone. Do we get to change the message? We do. Get, we have the option of changing the message. We have the option of putting our message on there, and I wrote up something just to see what everybody thought. And how about when? Uh, Somebody decides that they're not going to be there. You know, Virginia's not going to open that day, or whatever. How are going to handle that? Well, I could put a note on there. Like I put for Fridays, because Fridays are so, you know, they vary for people and things like that. Please check the website for hours on Friday. Please check, you know, go to the website for everything. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we could put something in there saying. You know? These are standard hours for the latest information. Yeah. Check the website. Yeah, you can do something like that. <coughs> something that we're I just don't like the ringing thing, you know? Yeah, it's a good idea. Anyway, so I just want you to look at it and say, do you want to you want to see what it? No, no, I'm taking it. So, I don't know what you think. If you if you guys approve it, we'll work on it. I'll work on it. My only concern would be the times that. Somebody is the assessing person is not there, the town clerk is not there, code enforcement is not there. A way to make sure that somebody doesn't come always out. You said it was open. I know, it's not like we have individual extensions, but we can leave our own personal thing per office. Yeah. It's more check our website for closures. See, that's what I put. put, put please check our website closures, just in case. For the something like that, yeah. latest information right. on hours. Or mm -hmm. A more generalized message might be the best way to go, you know, or we could. When you make your suggestion, just say go to the website for detail on that one. I'm just going to work on it a little bit from the police and see if we can work this out. Okay. All right. And that was it? Um, All right. Planning wait, board. Wait, we should get four. Now you step out for a moment. Code enforcement, road agent. Oh, I did have one more thing. Jeez. <laughs> I'll write you next turn around. Go ahead. Code enforcement. Pick you up at the end. Uh, we lost one intent to cut on Storm Road. Um, appeal. Oh, and then I also have uh, 
Virginia called me this morning and said she had a package for me, and it was the, a shoreland permit application, which I think this is actually supposed to be out here for public viewing of the abutters. It's not mine, so I didn't want to stick it back in her box. I wanted to make you aware of it, and then leave it leave it in the, in the common office there. But that's what this is. And, um, I don't know what our procedure is, but I think um, before people on shoreland permit, before they send the lease up, they should go through the conservation. Right. So, but that's, I'll just put this in the common office. Right. Um, and then, uh, other than that intent to cut. Ed, did, did they get a package in the conservation? What's that? Did the conservation committee get it? I have no idea. I just, I when she called, I said, stick it in my box. I'll pick it up tonight. And I, when I opened it up, I read through it all. And it's just an application that has been sent to the state. And by law, the abutters have been noticed. And then there has to be something here for the public to come in and look at. And that's, I believe, what that package is. Because I really have nothing to do with it until it gets OK. And then my, my, only, my only issue is the enforcement, enforcement on it. So the application time is really not. Okay. How is your road project coming? Excellent. Um, they're going to find grade on Thursday and pave on Friday. Yeah. It's changed quite a bit. I mean, it's, I don't know. The mid yeah. But it's, I think it's going nice. And life for growth, the dirt part, is that, that's starting to really get. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. We've been kind of consumed with, with, these, and particularly Cedar Park, because you know we had put that off, and we, we had set a tentative schedule with the paving, and then when we realized how bad it was and how much more work was there, we kind of been sure. concentrating on that it's there. Did, on, on Governor's Road, where they cut the bank back, took the trees yeah. down, put the, the, did they pull a building permit? Are they going to build in there? Is that the intent? Um, well, the reason that work is done is because he's he's filed a driveway permit with the state and he needed a sight line. It wasn't enough acceptable on the sight line. But so, he didn't pull a building permit? Not yet, but he's been in several times talking to me and he, he wants to. But I, in that case, I had told him my advice on one of the meetings I had with him, um, knowing the, the situation that it originally was, I said you should apply for a driveway permit first because that's going to be part of the um, material needed for the building permit. That's what he did. As it turns out, it was the right thing to do, so he could do all that work and it was done and accepted before he files the permit. Just one more thing. Sure. I got a call from a resident on Eaton Road. Okay. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, resident. <laughs> Sitting in the back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And let me guess, it was maybe a dead end sign? Uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I will, I'm, I'm ordering one. I wasn't right. around, it's just something that really needs to be done, so I was just going to do it. Mm. Thank, thank you. Because, you. Yeah. you know, we have people coming up the driveway. My GPS told me this is a shortcut to wherever. I'm like, nope. <laughs> there were like three cars, you know. One day there were three cars. I was like, what is it? Is there like an open house sign at the bottom <laughs> of the road? Well, you can set up a toll booth. Oh. Yeah, that would be good, yeah. Totally good. Now that one's been stopped. Yeah. Okay. Will that get in before the snow flies? Before the ground freezes, yeah. Okay. You're sweet, thank you. Okay. Gary, do you have a candy? I, I I guess I gotta get together with Ed, I think. But anyway, we've got a road book now. Okay. Every in our road book, we got a hard copy, we're gonna also make an electronic copy as well. Mm -hmm. And the road book is set up in this manner. Every single road has a section of colored there's a color divider and then anything that's done to any of those roads. What we don't want to do with it is interrupt the normal processes of filing that Mary Lou does in terms of receipts and bills and things like that from various contractors, paving people, whatever. What we want to do with it is just make a list for every road of all the work that's done in the town on the roads. We've got a building an assets book too, so that there's a record for that road all by itself, where it may be combined with other roads as well, but so that anytime the town needs to flip to that page, either electronically or in hard copy, 
He can see what the work was done, who did the work, what it cost, and when it was done. So there's a master record of what's been done to all the roads in town. Because we don't have that information and all the stuff we've done. You'd have to be a quite a search and find mission. I'm assuming that, yeah. you're not looking for snow plowing or anything like that. No, no, we're talking about road maintenance. Snow plowing is different. It's improvements. Okay. 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 So yeah. my, my question would be, who's going to be the key person? To the planning that? board is going to be the keeper of the book and, and do the, the actual file work. Mm -hmm. Well, in order to do that, what we've got to do is sit down, and it could be with either Mary Lou or you or both of you, to get that information. We don't want the bills or any of that. All we would... I mean, a, a photocopy would be all right, just in terms of being able to make a list. It's just going to be a page, and on that page is going to say, this was done to that particular road, we'll go in the binder, between whatever road and the next road. Yeah. So that... Okay. I think what, if it, it'll help, I'll, I'll be the one to report to the planning board. Yep. And I'll, when a project is done, I'll meet with we'll Mary Lou, yeah. get the information I, I know they want, I'll put it together and give it to you. I okay. appreciate it. You're yeah. just giving it what we approve to, to be done and it's finished. Mm -hmm. Then you're just going to give it. You don't want my personal opinion in there? <laughs> <laughs> We're not interested. That goes to the next <laughs> okay. And no, we just need it. Yeah, we just want only completed. Yeah, okay. that's what I mean. I, right. you know, okay. That's why rather than Thanks. have them contact Mary Lou and my project might not be done, it might not be bills in, sure. and, I, and then I can write a, a, a description Perfect. that's easy for everybody, like the public to read and what was done, and stuff like that. Um, can I continue? Or are you going to? No, go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, I would just be budget season, and we've, we've changed things around this year because of our proposed projects for next year, Life at Road. I would suggest we, we start um, making some decisions so that we don't run into, that's a much bigger project than what we've done, and we don't want to be waiting. It seemed this year, before we got the, I got the okay to go ahead with Moose Mountain Road and Rice, it was, time was taking along. Well, we're was, beginning, um, starting next month, yeah. we're going to meet the two off weeks and work with a bunch of so we want to pick a date for him to come and specifically go over this. Well, that, well that's why I'm just, I don't have to be there. I mean, if you're doing it with the road committee, however you want, but I'm just, it's a word of encouragement to. And the road committee can be separate and, and uh, deal with that. that. So early in the spring, we can get to go ahead for that and, and get on. Okay. We're starting the uh, budgeting thing starting Good. next week. Okay, so we'll have to put a plug through that. Uh, yes, sir. In regard to the, uh, the driveway permit, did the DOT force him to do that and then force him to I, I don't know. It's, it's kind of out of my control. I, I just know being a state road, he has to get his permit from um, from the DOT district. They do come out and look. That's the state. But who they, paid? They did in my driveway. Oh, I'm sure he paid for the work to be done. So he had, they said that he had to do something to the uh, to the the view and everything else. And then I'm, I'm, believing, I'm believing so. I, I don't know that for a fact, but that's that's what he was doing. I'm familiar with that stuff. Well, we're going to move around here. a specific case, though. Oh, okay. I know he's put, you know, they traditionally want 20-foot paved aprons, and he's dug out 30 feet, put in good gravel, and, you know, he's laying it all out for that. Okay, Conservation Commission. Emergency Management. Forest fire. Heritage. Heritage. We are having a potluck dinner um, honoring our veterans um, at the townhouse. With or without heat? With without heat or water. <laughs> 5 30 on Saturday, November 9th. <coughs> so please come. I have made up a suggested. Uh, order of worship, I guess I'll call it. So if your last name begins with A to E, bring a vegetable. F to L, bring a main dish. M to R, bring a salad. S to Z, bring dessert. I thought it was that for dessert. I think you're good dessert people. I think that, um, I, you know what, it, it really doesn't matter what you bring if you bring something. If your name starts with one of these and your specialty is something else or you want to make something else, you're in the mood for something, please just bring what you 
want to bring. We will provide, the Heritage Commission is sponsoring this, we'll provide bread and butter beverages and paper goods. And then we will have a little bit of after dinner music from a group called Kitchen Pickers, which is Harold Chamberlain and Lance and a few others. So it should be a nice evening. Okay. Under my treasure thing, I'm not done. <laughs> Thank you for my new file cabinet. It came. It was a very funny incident, but that's just sure I've heard the story. It was interesting. Um, one other thing is at that meal for the Veterans Potluck Dinner, we have bought, you're paying tonight, or tomorrow night, for three trash cans. We're going to start uh, the town recycling at each of the dinners that we do. We had so many people come up and say at the dinner in August, where do I throw my plastic? Where do I this? We really need to start recycling. So we're going to. We've purchased the trash cans. This is the heritage folks and their budget. No. <coughs> For the townhouse budget, twenty nine ninety something, you can afford it. Each? No, for all three. Oh my god! And we're getting uh, letters um, on them to say what each of them will be. So, and this is also the last thing is this is New Hampshire History Week, so it's the perfect time to celebrate your favorite historical spot. In our state, we are fortunate that our history resides not only in museums and historical sites, but also in places that we enjoy every day. So, we enjoy already, a historical place. We've already done it. The Cemetery Commission has made a presentation. Yes, and we have a beautiful townhouse we're fixing up. Thank you. Can I go on? Yes. Thank you very much. Don't let us forget Jessica. Cemetery, we've already done you guys. Anything else? No? Okay. Uh, town clerk, joint loss. Mm -hmm. Is it this evening, 6 o'clock? Okay, and you did? Pardon me? You had it? We had it, yes. We had, anything to we had some action items. We're going to take a look at updating the, make sure the first aid kits are current. Um, we did a walkthrough with Jennifer McGowan earlier today to make sure she knew how to use the facilities, the alarm system, etc. And how to get out of here, she had to get out. And uh, any other action items? I don't think there were any other actions. Okay. Where's the distance? Did you do an update? I could do it. I could do it. Want to complain any more tonight or we're done? Hold on a minute. While we're waiting, Agricultural Commission. Jessica, you had something you wanted to add? Kind of a little off. Yes, and I keep forgetting every meeting. I'm able to put maps. Are maps on? I said every pack maps on the website. I just want your approval. That's it. The, the big maps, though. Yeah, but they're small. Right. So people from home, <laughs> so people from home can look at yeah. their. Anybody can get it on great. real estate. Anybody I can get them all. Put them on there on the website. Yeah, I think that's so a good idea. No problem. Okay. Is that Okay. Uh, statistics for this year, the past year, uh, average sessions. Per day, 35-ish uh, for the month of September. That's a little high. Uh, July and August was a little lower, 33, 34. Pages hit per per day, over 100 pages per day have been hit on the web page, uh, on the website. So when people go in there, make they're looking at 100 pages per day. That's that's a significant number. July, August, September, the three most popular web pages. Town clerk, town clerk, and town clerk. <laughs> then assessing in July. August was the calendar. People go to the calendar to see what events are scheduled. And in September, assessing again. And uh, then for September, a, an entry of meetings and uh, agendas, minutes and agendas hit. So it's the town clerk is the most popular. When I look back over the year, the past six months, town clerk has been there four times, four out of the six. Okay. And then assessing. Given the types of things that she does, which can go licenses, car registrations, and everything. And when we put maps up, there'll be more in assessing. Mm -hmm. Very good. Cool. Thank you. Gary, you had something to say? 
No, no, you're, you're gonna, are you going to do planning board? I was where are you going to buy the planning board? You weren't here. That's right. So we're coming back to you. We would have forgot you, but go ahead. No, it's okay. I, I can't go home. But uh, we got a couple of things going on, so I figured make a report. Uh, one of them is we have a public hearing tomorrow night uh, following a, a meeting to uh, make sure that we accept the site plan, or not site plan, uh, the uh, application for subdivision as complete. And those two items are um, McKillop uh, uh, taking a small portion of land from one lot of Jordan McKillop and adding it to another lot uh, for dubious. That's one of the items. They're both applied for by the same people and they're both the same evening. The other one is creation of two residential lots from the subject parcel. Lot 6-7, etc. Proposed lot 6-7A equals 2.35 acres, etc., etc. All this information will be available to the public tomorrow night on the desk before the public hearing. So that's it's been posted and we're doing that. Okay, that's that. Um, we got a bunch of things going on on the planning board. One of them is um, we're ongoing CIP. Uh, also, uh, we've been discussing an issue that was created or we became aware of a potential issue when um, Bob Bordeaux from the mountain came in and asked how we felt. He didn't make an application, but he asked how we felt about subdivision in the rec zone. And his intention was he was going to subdivide a portion of the rec zone, into, uh, one of them into a two-acre lot for the purposes of building a caretaker's house, which is permitted, one caretaker's dwelling in the rec zone. Uh, he, his desire to make it a subdivided lot had something to do with the fact that his daughter was going to apply for a mortgage and he somehow needed to have a, uh, an individual parcel so that it was mortgageable by a bank. I'm presuming I'm getting this accurate, but it sounds, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, the point is, at that point, I decided to talk to the town attorney about the legalities of certain things. And she explained to me that subdivision in the rec zone, which we, nobody in town ever expected to happen or considered happening. The rec zone, the rec zone, it's the mountain. Everybody knows that. However, as it stands now legally, there's nothing to say in our zoning ordinance that the rec zone cannot be subdivided. Therefore, it automatically reverts to the same conditions that govern our RA zone for subdivision. The same exact conditions. Um, and that's what would be the driving basis behind anything we would either approve or disprove as a planning board for a subdivision. Now, that is innocuous enough on its face, however, as a planning board, our job is not, Bob is a great guy, the families, they're nice people, their intentions up there, they're, they're a credit to the town. Our concern though is not with Bob Bordeaux. As a planning board, our job is to plan out for it could be 20 years, it could be 40. And there are issues that have arise with this in the sense that if theoretically you subdivide off a parcel of two acres, and you put the caretaker's house on it. You're allowed one caretaker's house. However, it's a subdivided piece. Now, in the event that that gets sold, which could conceivably happen, there's a separate parcel in the rec zone. Now we have two different parcels in the rec zone. We actually have two now, but that's not the point. Now, that parcel has a residence on it, and it's owned by a completely different person. Perhaps Bob won't own that mountain or his family in 20 years or 10 or 5 or whatever. Then, another caretaker's dwelling could conceivably be built on the mountain. Now you have a situation where there's a two-acre lot, and the way our ordinances read, there could conceivably, there's a residence there, and maybe no recreation going on. We have nothing to govern any of that in our ordinances, nothing, zero. That could happen 10 times. 
It could happen 15 times. And, there would be, and, and it would not happen in a month, but it could happen over 10 years. And that's our job, is to not, I mean, the intent, obviously, in the master plan and the people that created the right zone was not to create a situation where there are multiple residences in the right zone. But clearly, legally, the potential is there for that to happen. So we are wrestling with this at the moment. We haven't come up with solutions, but there are some good solutions that don't inhibit the property owner's rights now. We don't wish to do that unnecessarily without cause, but do modify the ability of subdivision of the rec zone into multiple parcels, especially small ones, with residences on all of them, because as soon as you do that, the way our ordinance is reached, you can put a caretaker's house in every single parcel, which is a problem. I mean, that's not what we intended in the rec zone. So that's an issue we're wrestling with. And I gave Rob Collins the, uh, the um, go ahead, not the past meeting, but the one before to go ahead and draw something up. And he extracted a bunch of things from our current subdivision regulations and put something together that we're, we're working with. It's our working document right now. And we're going to come up with something soon. Uh, not necessarily to affect Bob Bordeaux, and it probably won't affect him <coughs> in any way, but it would prevent a future owner from subdividing a mountain into 20 parcels that might conceivably change things. Anyway, makes sense. there's that. Uh, there's one more. I think. Uh, now, sit down and shut up. Um, SRPC. Well, there's SRPC. Uh, that they're willing to have an event come to make their presentation to us if we have an event in the town where they are doing the Grand State Futures Agreement and, and a lot of business that really concern every one of us, even though many of us are not aware of how much it will concern us in the future. People should be um, cognizant of just what the implications of all this are. I'm not saying for or against it, but these folks will make a presentation supposedly at an event, which might be something we would stage in Brookfield like a coffee, which this is suggested on Saturday morning coffee. So that's one thing. There's also another thing. Ah, senior moments, boy. Um, we'll come back to you. You can think about your thing. All right. We'll, so I'm done. Yes, sir. We'll come back, we'll come back to you. So we'll go anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, other boards, committees. Uh, we have an issue with uh, Bryce Trout. Right. Well, we said we were going to discuss what we're going to do with the top part of Bryce Trout. Oh. And we know that the bottom part taken care of. For anybody that wasn't here, the bottom folks all agreed to the situation and what would happen. And we proceeded as since everybody was in agreement to go forward. The top half that we're going to try to see if we can get people to agree we know we don't have to move the road if everybody's happy with what it's there and they're willing to sign off some paperwork that may have to be drawn up or well, they'll have to have <coughs> that's if everybody wants to agree on things if not then we need to go to the next step yeah i i i think we should i don't have to look to ed i think we should ask ed for a recommendation I mean, some, we know the blacktop is on people's property. But if he needs five to eight feet to plow snow and ditch it, okay. that puts it further on these people's front lawn. So, oh, there's no question about that. We assume, I'm going to assume those people don't want, they want their land. There you go. And we got to shift okay. everything over. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I thought, I'm assuming that. So how do we do with the, how do we deal with the whole road? I mean, there's parts where the blacktop weaves in and out of the right of way where I think it, in my opinion, looks okay. I mean, it's not in the center, but it's okay. But in some places, it's tough to do the maintenance that's required. And maybe the starting point of this, the road agent for his input on what he needs to do the proper maintenance up there. Because that will affect our road budget for the coming year. Because again, I think we made a presentation, or we at least were told the people that we're going to try to take care of that in the coming year. That without anybody's we'll continued plowing this year, but we're hope to have solved this by next year for the road. But that would fit into the road budget, obviously. So, do you have any, or you need to give time to give some thoughts as to? We definitely want everybody's 
the road could be in the town right away. Well, that, that's we may the, have to that's shift the it over. In itself, right there. there. There's parts of the right of way that the, the parts of the road itself that aren't even in the right of way. And if you're going to ask, I agree with you, anybody, and in, in, in my uh, personal opinion, fair is fair. You're willing, it's easy to say that the people who are going to gain land are, are certainly going to be willing to sign off. But sure. it's not fair to the opposite side, because whoever gained on one side, the opposite side is lost. Um, so, you know, I don't know. And I'm in sign that both sides agree <laughs> on this. And one wants to give up half. Yeah, that's going to be, I doubt that's that's going to be a banter session right there. Yeah, I doubt that they would. Right. They, for some reason, wanted to. Yeah. Problem is off. What, 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 what it goes back to is a lot of those pins are there, and when you start looking at those pins, I mean, why people don't look at their pins before they put fences up and all this, that, and everything, I don't know. But yeah, we, we need a good six, six, eight feet. To shift over. Yeah. I and mean, then it will still not be in the middle, but at least it's. Well, yeah, I mean, we could be, I suppose, depending on the elevation of the road and the budding land, we could be six feet off the right of way. You know, the, 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 the road itself doesn't have to be in the center. Mm -hmm. But we've got we to gotta be able to do our work and stay within the right of way. So, so I was thinking that if we take the map we have on the, on, the, on the table, if you could sketch on that as a starting point, what you think you need to do the necessary maintenance, then that would be a starting point for discussion. That would, and then we could get the but I have no way of plan I have no way of plotting the existing road on that. Okay, good point. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I could, um, I mean, I could go back through, put the offsets back up again, and based off the offsets, I could put another set of offsets in that project what I think I would need, and then you know what I was, I could I could go back to the original offsets that we had that night that we met out there. Mm -hmm. From those offsets, we could put a new set of offsets in as bare minimum, and then pull the first ones out so you could get a look see at how that plays out. If that helps, I don't know. <clears throat> well, I would certainly see as we work down the road. There may be I don't know how many lots we're talking about. Eight. Um. I'd have to get back. I'd say have to eight really for the sake pay of attention argument. to what was nine. wrong. Say there were eight. Nine? Nine. Yeah, nine. But I mean, if four of those have no problem, that's one thing. But if we have, you know, say four who have a problem, that's, they're the ones we have to concentrate Well, if there's, if there's nine lots there and four are going to have a problem, then five are going to have a problem. If four aren't going to have a problem, then five are going to have a problem. Right. So we'll just concentrate on the problem, I guess. Assuming everybody's Yeah, happy. let me spend a little time going back over there and looking at that. Question from anybody living there? No comments? Again, we're trying to resolve this peacefully, fairly, in fairness to everybody. And uh, if somebody wants to donate their land, I really doubt that they would. But if they do it, that's up to them. But under the belief that they probably would not. We need to proceed and see if we get this all squared away by next summer. And for our budget, you know, we've got to redo a road. Yes? Okay, so you need to take it off the property, is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And then you'll, and then the bare minimum you need is six or eight feet. Mm -hmm. But why don't you just look at the rest of the road? The rest of the road is offset 10 feet on one side. Why would you just not follow that all the way down? Why are you worried about the bare minimum when this is the town's property anyway? We could, we could just redo it go straight down. I mean, why doesn't the town just say, this is how we're putting the road in? I don't understand why it's... Kind of be trying to do it as um, diplomatic, there you go, as possible. And uh, the road already has curves and swerves. If we right. could do it to keep to a point where it obviously fits the town's needs. Right. But also if we can make it as easy as we can for the uh, landowners, we can rather than just say, this is where we're putting it, you're out of luck. We well, you, well, it's already kind of where it's supposed to be, and I mean where it's not supposed to be, and so those people are out of luck right now, anyways, and have been. So, in, in a way, we it's didn't like, put the road in the No, 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 I know you did, but what I'm saying is people keep saying, well, I hate to see this person lose property. Well, that person's not losing property, that person's been encroaching every year. Mm -hmm. I have pictures from the 70s, that person's been encroaching. Was the road there? No, the road was dirt. 
the road went right near those trees. There was a fence. The property has come out. So what everybody... Well, see, I don't have those pictures. We've asked for things to be turned in. No uh, turned yeah, I, I actually had them at a meeting before, and somebody said they would give me an email, but nobody ever did. <laughs> so we, those pictures, that type of thing would really help, because that's what we ask for. People have pictures for us to look at. Matt I was trying to check on something for aerial photographs today when I was in Concord. I talked to somebody about see if we can get some aerial photographs of the, uh, what is it, the agriculture. Uh, Right, what actually, actually you know, I, I have a contact person that you can check okay. over there. I'll get you the contact. So it's, just, it's environmental enforcement. They have all the area maps. So I, I, that's what I was doing today. That's one of the things I asked. Could we somehow get these to give us a little more homework as to where things were? And it would be very clear. So between that, our goal is obviously we have certain things. We have a well that's put on the town road right away. Those people would like to keep it there. They're going to have to do some legal work for us to sign off on it at their expense. And with the acknowledgement that the towns are not responsible for any salt damage, that type of thing, since it's on town work. But we're, that will be their cost to do since they put it on the town property. Now, all the deeds have measurements on them. Everybody's supposed to have a certain amount. That's, the, that's what the, the record is of the county. Right. So it doesn't match that, correct? That's right. Doesn't match it. So you can't just like leave the road the way it is. Although it's the easiest thing to do, you have to reevaluate the whole area. And that, I don't know how much money that would cost. But is there a way we could not have cost that much, but then also redraw the lines? I mean, do you have to go through and measure everything all over? Again? We've already done that. No, we did Go ahead, Eddie. We paid for the survey done, an official survey to go from Route 109 all the way to the bottom of the of Bryce Drive. So we know, we know confidently where our right-of-way is that the town owns, which is a double benefit because when it shows our right-hand right-of-way, it also shows that of Butters' right -of uh, property line too. So each homeowner would have to then go back and they would be responsible for redrawing the lines? No, they don't need to be redrawn. They don't have to redraw. No. no, there's only one, one person <coughs> that came out with a survey and it showed a straight line from the right to the left and, it, and there was actually three pins in the front of this property with a, a hook in it. Mm -hmm. And the fact is, you know, he claims that that's certified survey and that's true, but if there's any discrepancies, they're going to go back to the original one and it's the same as that's why you, you have uh, title insurance, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it's going to go back to the beginning when it, to the original survey. And while, while I'm speaking and talking about the upper half of Bryce Drive, through all of this, um, what we've noticed is um, Piney, and is it, what's, what's to the left? Piney. Oh, Piney goes all the way through. That's just as bad. Piney goes into the So we have other properties down there that have to be addressed. Yeah. And, and, I, and I guess that raises the bigger point. If we do this, we're going to fudge the numbers type thing for this one road, are we fudging the numbers? Is it going to set precedents down the road for other potential issues to come up? And is it fair that someone's taking town property and then going to sell their house down the road is, that's, well, though that's my property now. That's, that's stealing. And, and reality of it is, if the town property is what it is, and the road is supposed to be where it's supposed to be, that's where the road needs to go. Mm -hmm. I, I think this idea of compromise, it's, it's good, but by the same stretch, it's also setting a dangerous precedent down the road if we ever run into an issue again. You were talking about Piney Road. <coughs> are, the, are the pins correct? It's just an encroachment past? The yeah, and the pins haven't moved there. Right. They're, they're there. And being aware of all this, and now that what I know is, I, I, I stopped looking at I know what the problem is, it's somebody's fence. Well, there's two, both fences, the okay. one straight at the bottom. And the owners are aware of this. Yeah. And, you know, you just say, take your fence down. If you have to. Right. And they, they would. Right. It wouldn't be a confrontation. No, but no, I'm saying it's, it's something that has is to. Is my fence on the right-of-way? And I said, well, yeah, 
because your pen is three feet back. So he said, well, do they want me to move it? I said, they're not doing anything to the road, yeah. but if it's no, plowing I'm saying it's future, like that, future reference. Sure. Yeah. I don't think it's a big problem. Because I think the survey is correct. The pins are the way they should be. Correct. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think maybe I can say what I was trying to say was the blacktop's got to be in the right of way. It doesn't have to be in the center of the right of way. So we need the minimum distance off the blacktop so it can do its job. Mm -hmm. That might result in the appearance of someone on the other side of the road having more grass than they really should on our right of way. I'm not suggesting that we have, that we not use our right away. But it doesn't have to be on the center. I, yeah, I, I, if Ed can say, here's the way the road needs to be, fine. But the idea of one property owner giving a property, that, that's just that's just unfair. That's just, we're not asking if they were saying if they want to. I don't think they would, but if they want to, then they have somebody out there who wants to get I'll tell you right now that that's not Okay, that's not that problem. Let's go the Unless the other person that's gaining all that land wants to pay a dollar for the money across. That's fine. If they want to sell land, then I guess it's... But Brian has a point. You know, that's that's not fair to ask somebody to do that. Nobody's asked them to do it if they wanted to. Okay. I'm not asking you to do it. I'm asking, would you want to do that? I doubt I would, but I mean, you can't say we didn't ask. If the person says no, okay. Okay. Well, it. Then you say no, it's resolved. And um, how do you... Selectman feel about sending out a letter to the remaining residents on the beginning of Bryce Drive again saying we would like to put the offsets back up because that that stirred up a lot of emotion over there um, but if we're going to try to do something I wasn't under the impression we were actually going to do something about it next year just in the future but if you want to do it next year we've got to set a budget for it I would feel better myself if I, we put those offsets back up and we laid out the road bare minimum, moving only where we had to and doing things like that. It would better serve me to have those offsets back up. But because of the emotion, I think you probably want to consider sending out a letter. And we said if in the future if we're going to do anything, we would notify the residents. So a simple just letter. just let know it's for planning only. Yeah, and a, a simple letter saying we're <coughs> just going back to us, assess our options. And you'll see some additional state work going on. Walking so, on Towns right away to put out because it's a. You drop a letter, that's fine. You want me to drop a letter? Yeah. Didn't you already send one out? Do we have a copy of it? We can oh, just change sure. the date and stuff like that. <laughs> we were writing on the towns right away. Yep, no, I think that would be good because then we can all visually see it. And then we'll, you know, hopefully before it gets too cold and snowy, we'll go out and say, this is what I think we should do. And if you say okay, then we can put a number to it. For the right. And then we can look at the issue. Do you put it right down the middle? We can discuss all that. Okay. Yeah, do you want to do that? Obviously, fairly soon before the ground freezes. Just get sure. the letter up on this. Yeah, we'll work on it. And it only need to keep on the top half? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it won't affect anybody from the intersection down because okay. we've already done our work there. And it'll be good. Do you want to have a date that we're going to discuss this? Or go out there and look? Or well, um, you would work so you can work on it? I won't wait till the next meeting to tell you. I, as soon as Jessica and I get a letter sent out, we'll give an adequate time to get there. We'll get the we'll get the offsets up and take a look at it, and then I will contact one of you personally, and then you guys can talk amongst yourself and hopefully get it on. No, we can't talk amongst yourselves because we have to have an official meeting for scheduling. I mean, talk about amongst yourself when you want to hold a meeting for this. Right. Okay. Yeah, and would you give the people an idea of how long it'll be up? A week, whatever it is. Yeah, a couple weeks. Just put a little bit of station to remain there for. Because we, weeks. I got to have time to do my research and estimating. Then we have to have time for you to come out with a meeting and, and invite those people out. You know. Right. Well, we actually, I don't think you'd have to invite those people out until after you have made a decision. Right. And this is all for the purpose of trying to resolve this. Meeting. Resolve it and put a number to it. Right. Okay. Was one of those? Yes. The town road currently is 20 feet wide. That one in there, I think it's, some parts are probably 20, mostly 18. Mostly 18, 18 to 20. 
would there be a time in the future where you would say we've got to have 24 foot roads? Um, we're we're happy right now to maintain an 18. Okay. And um, I'm just thinking if you put the road here and then all of a sudden next year you want wider, you go to the side that ends the extra. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's rather an awesome course. Okay. I have one more question. Yes. So Bryce Drive is on your radar. Like you guys said, Lightford Road. That's what you plan on your big project next year. Yeah. You? Was, but this depends on how much this all costs. Our original thing was to do Bright uh, to do Lightford, but that's before all this came up. We so you this do plan case. on working on Bright before you go to Lightford? I'm not going to comment on that now. Let's we'll just see what the price is coming out. I can't promise that. And we hope to have it fixed, whether you have a dirt road, you have it <coughs> riding on grass. Let's, let's get the, the uh, road committee involved. So I'm really not going to commit to that. We want to resolve by next time. That's what you guys are looking at? That's yeah, that's what I'm looking I'm speaking for myself personally. Yes, I'd like okay, to Okay, because I'm just saying that the property owner wants to cut all that tar off their property, they, they can do that legally. We just. Yeah, we just asked if they could so please wait until... So that would make it an urgent issue if somebody did that, so I'm just making sure that you guys are looking at this and not, you know, looking at doing something else. Well, we plan to, and as we said when we went out there, we're hoping everybody would just allow everything to be there so this could be addressed next year. Somebody wants to go out and put stakes, you can't go on my land, and we'll have to address it sooner. Okay, thank you. So, but yes, you need there. to tell us ahead of time so we can put caution things out there and all that, so for everybody's liability. Um, they think it would be important. Yeah. I think everybody, I think at this point, I got the sense everybody was cooperating, so. Yeah, this is the winter. Everyone said we'll, we'll go through the winter. Yeah. Push this on here. Yeah. And what we do as far as moving the road, uh, depending on the budget we goes, we might be able to do a small amount next year. Well, it depends on what the costs are. Okay, just wanted to make sure that it was oh, top no, priority. Good. It's a priority. It's up there to be addressed. I'd want people to come out there and met with everybody and listen to everybody's concerns. And we went ahead to the bottom. And our goal, that we said all along, we're going to try to resolve the issue on the top part. Yeah. Yeah, it's only fair to. Yeah. Only fair to. Once we do, we have a problem, we should fix it. Well, my curiosity got me because instead of fixing a problem, the bottom half of it was paid where there wasn't a problem. So I just want to make sure. There was a problem. There was less problems down there. <laughs> well, yeah, it was on nobody's property. Correct, but that was an easy, I want to say an easy fix. It was more, I think it's all a technical arguing and, you know, all people getting involved. That was, let's do it. Oh, everybody agree. Sure. We could do that at the top. If everybody agrees, it would be a lot easier than having to go through real fast. Okay. Let's see what happens. Yep. That's what we can do. All righty. Gary? I'll give you remember what you had to do. Why did you forget that you needed to tell us? I still don't remember if the senior moment is extended. Uh, <laughs> so back, we'll talk to you senior before senior we end. Extended senior moment. All right, through farm property equipment. Mm -hmm. We had the letter that went out to the Drew Far, the Drew Farm folks in regards to removing their equipment. Or their equipment from our property, yes. It's still there. Oh. What was the deadline? 15th of October. Oh, we own some equipment. Maybe send the one final letter, certified. That would be my suggestion. One certified letter that by November 15th it was not removed. You will deal with that on our auction. No. Okay. He pays me. But well, I think we should give him some final one and he should be sent certified too before we take possession of anybody's personal property. Oh, I agree. You can give him a deadline. Did they ever cash their check? This is regarding the two gentlemen that were here. It was just about the, the land that was, uh, yes. and it's equipment on it. About a month ago, I, I don't know how I did this, but somehow I called him, and we had a discussion about that, so he knows. Okay. He, he knows what? He knows that the equipment's there that needs to be removed. Okay. And what deadline are I think that would be a good fun right there. I was just telling somebody the other time. When did he charge 100 bucks for somebody to ride around and all that stuff? 
you know, just you had to use all the equipment, dig, it would be worth it. So I'd love to try all that stuff out. Now, they're, they're, we've got equipment, we've got oil drums, and we've got a big pile of trash. Ed can work the trash, and we'll just keep record. We'll keep record of all the charges, and we'll keep records of all the charges for moving the equipment. And we have to be careful for any um, spillage of yep. oils or anything yep. that happens to get on the property. Good. 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 Maybe a little, but not much. Do we need to put a no trespass on it with the exception of giving them the right to climb? I, I wrote up today to make sure the stuff was still there before I put it up, and I thought it might be appropriate to put some locks on the driveway. At least declare that it's yeah, maybe a no, no trespass on it. Right now, they're still for sale signs. <laughs> so I, I think it would be good to, to block the drive. We're good to go. We've lost it. There's, hey. plenty, there's plenty of rocks there. He was talking to the lady. He's oh. going to put the dead ends on her. Okay. I will come back to that one. All right. What other business do we have to come before the board? Any oh, other comments, yes, by the way? Yes. I'm going back to Drew Farms. Maybe some issues uh, about the land that this person uh, is having difficulty paying taxes. Or We've taken the land. We've oh, taken two lands. lands taken. So that, this would be a good cemetery. Right. So it could potentially be, yes. Five acres. Five acres. Five acres? Now, by the way, it is in the seven. middle of a housing development. On the right to the side, and would it be acceptable for No, I think it'd be acceptable if, if they wanted to swap lots or something that was best for our interests as well as theirs. That's a possibility. I don't know. Yeah, I would encourage you to go up and look. When you go in this upper road, there's a house. The next two lots, one has a for sale sign, and the next one has three pieces of equipment on it. They're pretty flat. And you might want to look at the maps before you go up. It's five acres total. So if you saw a two lots somewhere else, you could, you could theoretically do a swap with them if they want those two, and we got two other ones that were of equal value to us. That would be good for them. That would be something that could be considered. Like on 109, right? right. Come, out of, come out of their development and go on to 109. So there's an options out there that could benefit them, benefit us, as long as the properties were similar and, you know, or trees to be taken down and all that stuff. Do you have any idea who owns the equipment? Is it the old property or, it or somebody else? It's the old property. Yeah. It is, for sure. Mm -hmm. Because my thought is we're going to move it onto one of their lots, right? Isn't that the plan? No. I think we're going to junk it. Yeah, I, think we're junk it. Well, I don't think you're going to start. These things are pretty old and rusty. Because I don't want to get. They can move it to their own lot. They can do that. Otherwise, they'll be disposed of. Okay. Well, as long as they know, we're going to dispose of it. That's want to show the legalities of this that we're not doing something that we're going to regret. Yeah. Well, the lawyer drafted a letter. I get that, but and it's, that was protecting us because it said what we would do. The last paragraph said you have to do this, and I don't have a copy anymore. Yeah, I remember the letter, but I, you can write a lot of in a letter. It doesn't mean make, make it legal. You, you know, that's what I'm saying. I, I'd like to make sure before we trash somebody's personal property that it's it's legal. I, I don't want to be then saddled with a bill for actual cash value of a piece of. So, do you want the lawyer to draft the letter? You yeah. say, if you're if you're talking about um, removing that equipment and selling it, junking it, or whatever to recoup the cost of cleaning the property up. I think you need to be very specific in a new separate letter that states that statement only. You know, be very clear that that's what your intention is. Because I didn't, I didn't get that. I don't really have the letter in front of me either. But I, what I got out of my memory says that letter said we will have it removed. Period. Didn't say we were gonna, you know, move it off the premises. I mean, off the development. It didn't say we were gonna junk it. You know. I agree with Brian. Be very clear. We don't want to 
you know, 150 bucks at the lawyer now is a lot better than 15,000 later. Mm -hmm. yeah, is there a possibility that even though the property owner owns it, that there's lien holders on it? The equipment? I'm not well, sure there's a possibility, but I. I what happens if they get the third party involved? Yeah, well, how, how does that come uh, Maybe you shouldn't be notified that you're going to do this. I don't know. So how do we know what the lien holders are? I have no on idea. Property. Vehicle identification idea. number. Are they yeah. motor vehicles where you can check with them? It's construction equipment. Construction Would yeah, it would be sell? nice. It could. It would be nice to know because if the bank holds the mortgage or a deed or yeah. whatever, you know, title, I think they'd like to know. They can come and pick it up. They can come and pick it up. Yeah. I guess it's about your bike. Never speak that way. Right? Oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get a little so a nice when we place. review our budget and we see our attorney fees, it's all <laughs> I looked at it yesterday. All righty, uh, hearing nothing from Gary. Last chance, Gary. Uh, no, I'm still an extended senior woman. All right, you'll have to hold it for a couple of weeks. It was something to do with planning board business, but I don't remember what it is, and it wasn't as important as the other stuff. So. Okay. Great. What else did we discuss? I don't know. I'm bro I can't figure it out what you're looking for. I mean, I don't All know right. what it is. We're going to close the meeting. Wait, we have more things. Yeah. All right, wait a minute, Brian. That check is going to go into that trust account. That, that yeah. Okay, to make sure that you don't just throw it. It's like no, I will not. Oh, okay. Maybe. Anything else? Yes, it does mine. Is there a possibility you'll sign my contract tonight? If you're okay with it, I'm fine with signing it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I just I, have to get it. I'll sign it. Okay. <laughs> you have to I can get it and get you three copies of it real quick. You don't have your desk? Yeah. You know where it is, right? Oh. Chocolate. Everybody is here in the meeting before this is over. <laughs> 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 so we can move that face. This is your check for the roof. Yep. Your usual man. Dick gave some questions last time about warranty, whatever. We went back to the manufacturer to find out what we do. Let's listen up, please. Oh, he's a question. Well, talking about the roofing. Gary, we're talking about the roofing for the shed. We decided to go with the non-welded because of cost effect and uh, so decided on that. Non-welded? I don't get what's non-welded. You wanted the welding, whatever you suggested. No, you're right. Right. Standard seam. Standard seam. All right. We're not going with that. So what are, you, are you going with metal or shingles? No. We're going metal. So we, we check with the manufacturer to find out what's required to keep the warranty in effect for 30 years. Mm -hmm. right. And they want strapping, and on top of the strapping, they want felt paper. Okay. And that's and, what we've asked them to do. But that we that it, we were taking the strapping off and putting the paper on. They want both. They want strapping and the okay. paper, so it takes two hundred dollars more. Oh, then I, that's a no brainer. What's the color? Let's resolve this. Pink. Gray. <laughs> gray. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. One, I don't care. One gray, two grays. Gray it is. Oh, thank you. What color gray? Light gray, dark gray? <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't laugh, Mr. Color gray. Gray. It's all this. It's politicians. <laughs> Three colors to me. Yeah. Ever since he went to Google. <laughs> it's gray. Can I just take something about that? And we already never got to buy it. They want this coat paper on top of the strapping? Does it matter if you put it on top or underneath? Only if you want the warranty to last. We'll look at that in right? You know, yeah, that's what the, you know what the is. problem with that is? And, I, and I'm just going to tell you, in the manufacturer, I don't, I don't know, but somebody over there might, must not know what they're talking about because when you put a piece of strapping on a roof, you raise it up three quarters of an inch or an inch, depending on what you use. And then you put the tar paper on, and the tar paper does this. It bellies down. And that's a low pitch roof, which means that the air is going to get under there between the tar paper and the metal and condensate on the bottom of the metal and lay in the tar paper. So you have little tiny things of water up there. I, I don't get it. I mean, it, I would love to call them and get that over with the technical department, but if you want me to not bother, I, I don't have to. It should be down first. 
uh, I'll bring it up with them, but they got this from the manufacturer. Yeah, talk to the manufacturer because that's where they usually want the paper underneath the strap. I they, 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 one of the issues was we're not taking the old shingles off. So they're concerned about the cupping of the old shingles coming up and putting pressure on the on the on the uh, the new roof in yeah. the in the paper. You take the sun off the shingles, and it ain't happening. But you're gonna create a little. Do you agree with the cupping of the? Uh, oh, I I think I, I don't think you need a bolt. You either put the strapping on, or you put the put a belt paper down. I don't think you need a bolt. Well, it's their warranty. Yeah. And after 30 years, we better go with what they say for $200. Right? Yeah. Well, I see it. So you check with them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any other business? Fine. Hearing nothing? Jessica, you're all set? Oh, yeah. Do we have to we'll sign this? Do we have to sign this? We might as well do it uh, unless we go up the state. Do it in two weeks? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't work hard on that. He's too anxious. This is yeah. Why? 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 You? I need to go on vacation. All right. This starts next to me. One less stressor off of this. This starts next to me. It's an action item. You're you're big on that. I, I, I am, but I, I, we've been dealing with this for two months now. I know it's awful. Terrible. I've been losing sleep. I think he's buying a brand new backhoe. I think that's what. <laughs> he needs seats. Yeah, he needs seats. <laughs> okay, we have to fill in some dates. So I'm trying to get you to sign up for the price of fuel goes down. I got to adjust it again. I did that nice little calculation. It's all built in. <laughs> You got the email on the budget, right? We're starting that in two weeks. I guess you didn't, maybe you didn't demand. I didn't get the email on the uh, joint loss meeting either. And I checked it. I was up at 2 30 this morning when I got up checking emails and sending things. Yeah, it was on the calendar for weeks. You got the budget. You got the budget. Yeah, that was how many weeks ago? What? A week and a half ago? Yeah. Now this cemetery, they're going to make some modification. This is good, I think, right? They're going to make some My only concern of this is it's how it's down here. Uh, sign it and accept it. My concern is what accepted means. Yeah, I that. I, it didn't bother me. What it said was seemed fine to me, but I, I didn't understand what, what we were saying why. Right. But they figured the modification I kind of by the way. Okay. Where accepted is the term that I have a problem because I could see somebody saying, um, This is what the town agreed to down the line, and they're, I'm taking it as just factual information given us. It was presented to us and it was factual. But it didn't really, it's uh, it's in the minutes, so I don't know why we need to sign. So, I'm not going to sign that at this point. We should, unless we somehow. Break out that part. Break the next time. Not such a month. Okay, so we can address it next time. Alright, so the date that we're going to put here would be May 1st, 2014, right? You'd be entered on, and that's going to be the date we're going to enter on the contract, right? That's when the other contract expires, right? I think in the back it says it starts May 14th, but the, under your finger, I think we put that eighth date. Well, we, we, we can endorse a contract in. Now, but it doesn't mean that. Well, we'll begin until the other one. Yeah, the effective date of contract in these in the new terms of the contract would be would be effective on. Uh, I think it says it says in there when the contract's effective. Yeah, the agreement term beginning one May twenty fourteen. So. The topic for today's date. Yeah. Enter right. So we need to just change right. So. So we can check the oil prices now with gasoline prices because we're in the old contract. All right. So I'm just gonna write ten. Let's say the twenty second. When are we going to continue the discussion on that schoolhouse? 
So I say added the proper data and scratch out the 14 because it's, yeah, it's, it's all we need. Uh, Jessica, can you make me a copy of that as well? Yeah. And thank you. What? And maybe yeah. And then you have to decide on the heating source. Like that's right. where it goes. I work. So we've got to address that issue next. We want to do it tonight or we want to wait and decide? I've talked, if we have an issue of type and where I contacted a uh, supposedly somebody who would be in for a fee, would be, I didn't get the fee yet, independently come in and does all sorts of heat and give us theoretically an unbiased opinion. But uh, I just talked to the person and said, yeah, would you ever consider doing this in the formality area? I said, you could not get on it. Quite frankly, it's going to go to local people. And let me ask you about that. I'm not sure we need to do that, but we need to the party. And the way, the way the plan is, we're going to cut our fuel source, we're going to cut our electricity to the back there. You know, we're going to well, get rid of that trunk line, you know, like, if you would, it was called, uh, that big well, plan. Yeah. Well, um, so when we do that, the building's dead until we get the heating system back up. So if we're under there doing it, do we, can we get it done now? And yeah. my take is, give it all that, yeah. drain the plumbing, you say that you don't want to use the building until March 1st. We do the floor joists. Mm -hmm. We do the new heat. And then we bring the pumping back up and we can reuse the system, the system as it is. Do you have a question or a comment? Not this year. No. I don't think you have enough interest. It's in the paper. There wasn't enough interest. She got um, Tom Lavender to help. She needed somebody to help her, I guess. She told me she's hoping to go. So what okay. do I do? Do I go in there now? Well, let's find out what the, the, when this work will be done. It probably wouldn't be done until we started. From. Who could this begin? Do you have any idea if you were to be the one to do it? Are, are you talking to me? No, I'm talking to... Oh, oh, I'm basically <laughs> saying that I'll be working with the um, Probably in a couple weeks. When's the Christmas thing? Is it? Uh, December. Is it like the first week? And again, it all depends on the. Really? I don't know if you're going to do this. I haven't seen the stacks, so. Yeah. And that's like a staple. Don't have that many. Then you get January and February. The floor we can do. Can we get the heat resolved by March, by town meeting? Can I, can I offer an opinion? Sure. Please. I, 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 Why don't you buy two? Little electric heaters and plug them into the bathroom for the time and duration of construction. Oh, because I think we want to do the heat at the same time. Why not? Well, that's fine. But you can rip the heat out. You can rip the trunk line off from under the school. You can block the trunk, trunk line that. Yeah. You can block the trunk line that goes under the school. Just cut it off. Take it out of there. Put a put a panel on the end of the trunk line. It can continue to operate and run the, the meeting house end. And you got the oil line. Well, for that direct, you'd have to take the oil line off, but all you have to do is put the oil line back up, and you're good to go. But, 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 but what? The bottom of the heating, and it goes right through the floor joists that have to be put up. Of both units? It's the townhouse unit. The, 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 both of them, oh yeah. Both plumbs go down through the Oh floor. yeah. So you take the one out from the school. They're, they're the huge, room. too. They're so archaic. The technology's old. Yeah. I mean, they don't do that anymore. I, think well, we get, think I, I, I bet there's a way you could give them to continue to keep the heat on up there. But Even if you just... But, but, but. <laughs> but if, you, if you blow the pipes <laughs> out... <laughs> if you blow the pipes <laughs> out... Blow the plumbing out. Oh, well, sure. Get the job done. Yeah, that's fine. But it makes this townhouse unusable. Well, there and are then, you have, then you have the issue of the plaster. But we won't get into that. No, no, I'm not going to get into the plaster. I think the other thing that needs to be decided is where the new heating system will go, right. whatever you decide to do. That's a whole, other That's a whole nother. That has Just to be decided. Just putting it out there. Well, you keep it in the town, in the, in the schoolhouse like it is now? Well, there has been make. discussion to move it. Well, I guess that would be because it was moved somewhere else, depending on where it was moved. If it stays where it is, we've got to have, if they put something new in, we've got to know where they're going to put it. Right. Wherever it's in the back or the front. But that has to be decided. Yes. If there's any consideration to using a Renai, if that's even a possibility in the back, so you only have to meet the front, that's, even, that's something that would be up and running now. You wouldn't have to wait until next year to do it because that could be done now. 
I'm not saying you want to do that, but if that was a possibility, you wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't do it. You wouldn't solve the problem. You've got to take the electricity out from the heat, right? Oh, well, it might be fit, right? So you, so you, we need electric. Yeah, extension. No, you could, you could run a piece of, uh, you know, 12 2 wire. Not saying you want to do that. Well, just saying that's well, the well, thing to do. Yeah, what's, what's the goal at that point, you know? Just to keep this close warm? No, if you're going to do it anyway. Uh, you're going to do that anyway, looking down the line. Well, if that's the heating system, you've got to choose. Choose for that building. <coughs> Put it in sooner than later, that's all. That's what you're saying, okay. Um, all right, we got to decide where it's going to go. Put it off. Are they going to hurt put it off until next meeting? Well, I think this was good. We can start thinking about it. Think about it. We can get together two weeks. We're actually going to need to start meeting weekly. And we'll come up with some ideas again. We're all in agreement. We want to get this done as quickly as possible. And too bad for the people on a Christmas concert or their we we'll try to accommodate them, but if we can't, we can't. So they got to tell us what to do. Because last week, they weren't happy. Did you have somebody do a heat loss gain in the house, an energy audit, so to speak? We're supposed to have that done by the guy. I've never heard back from him. I was hoping maybe he caught somebody here. I will call him tomorrow. I called him I, back. I, I'm, I'm just going to do an energy audit. It's I, the simplest I didn't thing in the I world. I don't remember the results. I did one initially when you first started talking about it. Okay. Um, I can. Try to take results out. Did you do a regular heat loss, heat gain type of thing? No. Okay. That would help. So we'll just start that process in our next meeting, next regular, uh, well, next time we meet. Mm -hmm. We can start making a couple decisions on that. Sure. Okay. You need to know how many BTUs it's going to require to heat that townhouse if you do decide to replace the system. It's the starting point of picking a piece of equipment. We're going to the first argue about where it's going to go. No, I understand that. That's but the first one. I'll argue. First discuss. You know, size and cost and placement are all instantly the oil and the oil and the propane is a hundred different things we're talking about. Okay, we'll do that. Get it off. We'll have to discuss it. Definitely discuss it next meeting or whatever a special meeting. Okay. Right now, the floor choice is going to have the job. Have the job. Well. Four or five of them won't go in, that's for sure. So let's rip it out. There's you know. plenty of other work to do, though. Sure. And the spray insulation, you don't want to do that till the spring? No, but these guys, when they come to spray, they're not going to come back and spray the second five, for the last five floor joists at a different time. We're we going to use other spray elsewhere. Huh? We're going to spray elsewhere. Well, you're going to spray, uh, there's no point in having them come in and spray until everything's ready to be sprayed. You guys are we do it all on shop. We don't need to insulate it right now. Right. Yeah. So no worries. You have you have four choices, and then you're going to have to put in maybe some plumbing work, maybe. Yeah. And maybe some electrical work, oh, maybe. Definitely. Cool. No, definitely we're ripping the electrical up. And then so and then so it's a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. We'll decide next week, and we'll decide whether we're gonna if you would have somebody who's. The Christmas folks get in touch with us by next week, so we can I'll let them know. Tomorrow. We need to know. <coughs> You're no, putting this no. stuff out for bid, right? Depends on what it is. We're putting most things out for bid. We are, as far as digging it out and doing the, uh, the well, things that the trust four choices. Four choices, and we may not go out for bid. Depends on what the cost comes in. An estimated cost. You are going going to become general contractors. We could. You guys are creating a monster that you're going to. Now we're beyond that. Now we, I, I would agree, but we we're we decided to basically do it this way. He's going. He's going. A little bit ahead of time. Any other business? No, you're saying next week. Did you set a date and I missed it? Oh, oh it's not next week. It's the week first after. week in November. Yeah, we have a the week after next. Oh. Week after next. Yes. Oh. Yeah. November 5th. November 5th, we have a budget meeting. I don't want to. Yeah, we'll do it. Yeah, we'll do it. 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 We'll do
we don't have any data or whatever. I'm just trying to figure out what we need to make a decision. We've kind of flushed a lot of those issues out over the past months anyway. I'm just, no, no, I'm just trying to get out of here. Trust me. <laughs> One thing leads to so, uh, another in this whole thing. Okay. Everybody get their input, mm -hmm. output, and whatever they can get from people, ideas. And uh, we'll go from there. We'll make a decision with what we have. Mm -hmm. Any other business? Meeting chair? Okay. I've been trying to find the. Uh, yeah, I was in. Mean, <laughs> 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 